protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Thank you for joining us. We're about to have an extended interview, I believe. And if you remember last segment, we were talking with two documentary filmmakers for the documentary, We Need to Talk About Sandy Hook. I'm now joined by two individuals who are both on the opposite ends of the Sandy Hook spectrum. Uh, one is a writer for American Free Press, and his name is Keith Johnson. He, in fact, uh, there's an article here. It says, uh, AFP's Keith Johnson, I'm a conspiracy theorist, but not on Sandy Hook. The other individual is a man who we've had on the show several times, Wolfgang Halbig, who runs sandyhookjustice.com. Gentlemen, how are you both doing today? Good, Ron. So, uh, yes, thank you for having us. Yeah, uh, Keith, I'm going to give you the first, uh, I, I guess, the opening salvo. Um, you contacted me, and uh, you, you were explaining some things, and, and you said this is some really, uh, you're treading in some deep water here. So, in, in, in so many words. So explain to me what your position is on Sandy Hook, and then we'll let Mr. Halbig respond. Okay, well, yeah, uh, this, I mean, we know that uh, our government is involved in a lot of nefarious things, including false flag uh, attacks, uh, uh, disinformation uh, is spread. Uh, yeah, I'm a conspiracy theorist, like you just introduced me as one. Uh, I do believe that uh, these, these things do happen, but Sandy Hook doesn't qualify as that. There's not one shred of evidence to suggest that there was a hoax. Uh, quite the opposite, quite the contrary. Uh, there's overwhelming direct evidence which proves that Adam Lonzo was the sole perpetrator of this killing. And what I'm concerned about is uh, not just the fact that we have 26 uh, women and children at Sandy Hook who were, who were slaughtered. These were my fellow Americans who were slaughtered, and they need to be honored for the lives they live, not cast in some delusional fantasy someone has that this is a uh, conspiracy that their parents were involved in. Uh, no. Uh, the other concern that I have, uh, a secondary concern besides that, is that I believe that the real hoax is the hoax being perpetrated against the truth movement. I believe that uh, this has been spun into a conspiracy theory to bring discredit to the truth movement. And I, I, I see so much irresponsibility out there amongst individuals like James F. Tracy, uh, uh, James Fetzer, uh, both professors from uh, taxpayer-funded universities uh, who are putting out deliberate disinformation, and when it's brought to their attention, they don't even change it. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I did an investigation on one of these people who did this uh, documentary, quote-unquote, uh, We Need to Talk About Sandy Hook. I did an investigation into his website and found that the person who's collecting donations for it is a captain, Captain LaShawn Bush, of the U.S. Army Cyber Command. So this uh, website is an IP phishing website, which is collecting information on patriots, on uh, people who uh, have interest in these kinds of things. Uh, in my, uh, I mean, that's what I, I, I believe to be the case here. As a matter of fact, uh, this is confirmed. I was contacted by two lieutenant colonels who grilled me. I don't know what the uh, result of that investigation is, but, I mean, if you even look at this new documentary that came out, it's very slick. It's very slick. Uh, when I say slick, I'm, I don't mean that it has real, uh, you know, groundbreaking information. It's just the same old uh, speculation and debunk theories. But the production values of it are just amazing. Now, you compare that to some of us who are involved in uh, the debunking of these series. We have crude videos we put out. There's only two people who are actually actively debunking it, and that's myself and another individual by the name of C.W. Wade. So uh, that's my stance. You know, I've been called a government shield. Just go ahead and look at all of my, uh, you know, articles for American Free Press, uh, pro-gun, pro-liberty. You find any indication there that I'm a gun grabber, government shill, and I'll hang my hat up. So I'll well, hand no, the, uh, no one's accusing you of that. Visible. No one's accusing you of that, Keith. But I do want to say this: after Sandy Hook. It seemed like the government did come into line and the people involved in that were coming out saying it's time to go after guns. It's time to seriously look at what what we're going on, which leads to, you know, these gun yeah, lists, these registration is, lists, which always right. leads to confiscation. 
Well, the thing is, is if you look, Rob, uh, in 2013, two-thirds of the gun laws that were enacted were uh, pro-gun, okay, to loosen restrictions. So what happens is any time there's a school shooting like this, you're going to see the gun grabbers come out, liberals like um, – uh, what's the ex-mayor of New York, uh, Bloomberg? Bloomberg, okay, yeah. I've written about extensively. Yeah, his group comes out wanting to grab guns, but there's as much, if not more, pushback against the gun control lobbies by good, uh, decent Second Amendment loving Americans who say no, and that's sure. why. Any thought that this would be some kind of thing to, to confiscate firearms is it's ludicrous for them to think that they could pull something off like that and, and, and be able to get that kind of result. All right. Well, let's let Mr. Halbig uh, respond to that. Uh, what, what do you have to say? You've been investigating this for a while. What are your conclusions that you've come up with? Well, first of all, Rob, I got to make sure I'm talking to the right Keith Johnson because I'm just looking here. Somebody today uh, emailed me uh, something that he stated. And it's an email that goes to Deanna Spingola, works for American Free Press. Dave Gehari works for American Free Press. Paul Angel, Chris Petterick, Michael Collins Piper. And this is the statement headline, Wolfgang Halbig is a fraud. He calls me a, a school resource officer. The guy you're talking about, Rob, has no clue as to what my life is like, what I've done in public service for the last 36 years. Wherever he's giving his information, well, I'll tell you what, he needs to come to my house and let's have a conversation because he is so wrong. For him to call me a fraud and a liar, now let me tell you something, that's defamation, that's slander, that's libel, and he better get ready. So now, my comments to him, those researchers have dedicated their life in trying to take a look at Sandy Hook for what it is. There are so many, so many items Within that police report, it's a data dump. It's the worst report that was ever written, and it's not stated by Wolfgang Halbig. This is Mayor Jackson of Hamden, Connecticut, the chairman of this Governor Malloy Sandy Hook Commission on, school, on the Advisory Commission. He calls this the worst data dump. Number one, they're given a redacted report. Can you imagine? You're the commission. You are about to make recommendations that's going to change the gun laws in Connecticut. It's going to change mental health. It's going to change the First Amendment rights. And they get a redacted report. They don't even get to see the truth. They never, ever got to see the autopsy report of all of those 20 children and seven adults. Now, how in the world can an advisory commission, Rob, in all fairness, come out make solid recommendations that's going to affect the whole country, not just Connecticut. So if we're going to talk tonight, let's only talk about the facts, only about the facts, and let's talk about the Newtown police, let's talk about how they responded, and I'm ready to go. All right, yeah, and I, I agree. Let's talk about what happened on that day, what we do know, and then, yeah, there's a lot of speculation out there, but I think the reason you have all this speculation, Keith, and I, I think you will agree, People do not trust the government, bottom line. People don't trust what the information they put out. They don't trust the conclusions they come up with. They're just ready to say, no, we don't believe you. We're going to look for alternative solutions. And you've got a myriad. You type in Sandy Hook conspiracy, it's hundreds of millions of videos. Everybody and their mother out there is looking at this from a different angle. And they are, they're all bringing their collective expertise together where not each person is a doctorate or or a scientist out there, but by uh, people pooling their knowledge. And I think that's the great thing about the internet. Yeah, you are going to get some, uh, you know, you're always going to get the crazies out there, but you're going to get that in, in anything. But the amount of information that has been combed over, I, I think is pretty, uh, d definitely demands some some questions and definitely demands some answers. And I don't, I don't really think we're getting that from the people of Connecticut. Go ahead, Keith. Okay, well, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, Mr. Albig uh, says he wants to talk about the facts. First, he, you know, you know brings up uh, some email uh, saying that I called him a fraud and, uh, and a phony. Well, I'll say this right now. Mr. Albig, you are a fraud, and you can go ahead and sue me for defamation or libel. If you can find an attorney to do that, you go ahead and do it. But we have caught you in so many lies, it's pathetic. 
Uh, you are not a law enforcement. You don't have significant law enforcement experience. Even on your website, you admit that you have one year as a ticket riding Florida highway patrolman. Okay, uh, you, you've gone on the Deanna Spingola show and said specifically that you were a homicide investigator in the past. That's a lie. When I brought it up in our debate that we had, you said, well, anytime you pull, and I'm just paraphrasing, anytime you pull a dead body out of a car, you're investigating a homicide. So you don't even know what a homicide is, Mr. Halbig. And it's you're going out there. It's you're going death. out there. Okay, you're going out there saying that you're an expert on Columbine. I've looked at the Columbine reports, even the governor's report, where it has a list of all of the people that they consulted. I don't see your name there. And I've asked you specifically many times to please give us the information on when you were consulted, because so many people out there believe that you're an expert on Columbine and active shooter events, and we haven't seen that. You have a training certificate you put up that's a three-and-a-half-hour court from the National Incident Management Systems uh, you know, NIMS, three and a half hours that anybody can get. That's not the requirement to be an incident commander in an active shooter event. But yet, you're out there telling everyone that they should listen to you. You're the source. You know, I don't go out there and talk about my limited law enforcement experience, which actually is more recent and longer than yours, because it's been so long. Back in the early days, it's been so long. I, things have changed since then. Uh, and you say you want to talk about facts, and, and, and uh, Rob, you just said something about there are experts out there making videos. There are no experts out there. I talk to experts. These people, I would like to see one person with some credible law enforcement experience uh, to come forward and, and, and say, I, I, I and pat Mr. Albert on the back and say, yeah, there is something wrong here. Why don't we see that? Why don't we see medical person? I mean, active duty people right now coming forward and um, – endorsing Mr. Halby. We don't see that. We heard that he was going to have these people come forward, but they never have. Uh, I contact people. I contacted one, a clinical psychologist uh, and interviewed him. You can find all of these interviews on my website, NewtownPostExaminer.com. I uh, also, Mr. Halbig, contacted a glass expert, and I ran by his, uh, you know, that your theory that uh, the Nobody could go through that hole in the broken glass. He said, that's ridiculous. I mean, I can read you excerpts from real experts, which you haven't even produced. You collected, what, $30,000, $40,000, and you can't even give us one expert to substantiate your claims? Ridiculous. Now, people always say, well, what's your proof that, that children died, and what's your proof that this happened? Go read the report. Go read the 7,000 page, nearly 7,000 page report. Uh, look at all the interviews out there. Uh, people who have given statements. And the burden of proof is on you. If you're making the allegation that these people are lying, prove it. We're talking about sworn police officers. We're talking about people who are still there working in Newtown. You can call right now and you can contact. Officer New, he'll pick up the phone, maybe not today, but I'll, every time I've called, I've, I've, talked, I've talked to Sergeant Colgren. I've talked to Newt. I've talked to various people. They're still active duty there, okay? So these weren't, act these weren't actors in some uh, kind of Mossad plot that uh, Professor Fetzer believes. I mean, he's changed his story so many times. I mean, the burden of proof is on you, Mr. Albeck, and you haven't, you haven't proven anything. You, you keep saying that you're going to file these lawsuits. Uh, I have – I mean, you went on Michael Rivera's show on the 13th and said in two weeks – I'm going to file a lawsuit. Well, it's three weeks now, and still no lawsuit. Why are you so interested in keeping up with me, Keith? You don't have a job? I mean, don't you have a life? I mean, I'm going to give you one example, okay? Yeah, and guys, let's let's also, let's stick to the, the incident. I, I understand the personal attacks. Uh, you know, you guys want to jab each other, but let's let's stick to... Let's just stick to Sandy Hook, but go ahead, Mr. Halby. Let me just give you one fact, okay? Let's just start with this one, okay? I'm, I'm sure Keith will have the answer. How in the world can the public information officer for the Connecticut State Police in an interview with Scott Pelley from 60 Minutes, this is an interview that's seen worldwide where Scott Pelley simply asked a question. It must have been a horrific scene when you were inside the Sandy Hook school. And what does Paul Van say? Yes, it was. It was unbelievable. And Scott Pelley says, where was the shooter? Guess what your lieutenant says? 
He was found in the hallway. Now, there is the spokesperson. This is a man who threatens every American who gives out misinformation that if you, on the social network, if you provide misinformation, that you can be prosecuted. Here is a lieutenant from the Connecticut police. He is the spokesperson, and he looks at Scott Pelley in the eyes, and he said the shooter was found in the hallway. And then when you look at the Danbury Stadensky report, the final 7,000 pages, every time, whether it's crime scene technologists or anyone else in their report, whether it's a policeman, Connecticut, or the Newtown, they say the body of Adam Lanza was found in classroom 10. So now why would Lanz, why would Vans lie, Keith? Hello? Yep, go ahead, Keith. Did you hear that question? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. What he specific, okay, Mr. Halbig likes to add words to things. He was found in the hallway, Mr. Halbig says. Well, he, uh, the, what he specifically well, no, says. Vans said hall. that, I mean, not Halbig said that. No, I know, but I mean, he said we, it was it was a very short reply in the hall. It was outside. I saw the interview. Yes. Okay. So what does that mean? If you look at the report, it says that the uh, the, the hallway consists of. Have you ever heard of the you know like the north hall, the south hall, the north the, the hall consists of classrooms eight, ten, blah blah blah, so on and so forth. So that's a specific part of the building, the hall, okay, which consists of room 10. Yes, if you look at where uh, Adam Lanza's uh, body is found in those, it, where you see the blood and you see the, uh, 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 you know, the uh, the door, uh, who knows, maybe his body was half in the, in the classroom, half out. Uh, maybe Mr. Vance was, uh, or Lieutenant Vance was given bad information. But really, I mean, is that reason to believe that this was a hoax? I mean, they, no, they, he oh, observed it. Listen, Stay with the words. No opinions. When Van says on Scott Pelly, he says, I saw the shooter's body in the hallway. It's not halfway into the hallway. Did, no, 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 did you just say that? Did you, did, you just, did you just say that the reporter says, Where did you see him? Or did you say, Where was the shooter found? Because where was the I shooter's heard, body found? He says it was found in the hallway, not a classroom, not halfway in. See, you're twisting everything. You can't admit oh, no, 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 that a Connecticut like, police you're the officer you're you're is the lying. That, that you're, the one, you're the one who said that, uh, that Pena uh, uh, was in a classroom and said that he found multiple weapons, including long, uh, you know, long rifles and shotguns. That's not where he said that. He came out of the classroom and he was talking to other units. Uh, I mean, hey, stay that. with Vans. Let's stay with Vans. Let's clear that up for Rob, okay? And all the people that are going to be listening on this on Sunday, yeah. let's, let's clear this up. Is Lieutenant Vance lying or not? He's telling what? Scott well, Kelly, he's 60 minutes. You're, you're saying that he's lying or did he get his information wrong? There's a big difference. No, I mean, he was, in, he said, what Scott Kelly said, you are, yeah. what did the scene look like? And Vance responded, it was horrific. That means he was inside the school, and when he's asked the question, where was the shooter's body? Vance replies, it was in the hallway. Stay focused, Keith. Well, let's, hey, let's move on to it. I, I agree. Let's move on. Let's move on to another another topic. And 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 this is one I'll bring up. Um, two things. One is the squad car video. Uh, they claim in the report that they were evacuating 400 kids out of this school and the squad cars right there and you don't see anybody coming through. Now, maybe the, and this is on the film, we need to talk about Sandy Hook. Maybe the filmmakers edited that part out. I, I don't know. I think they would have shown kids if they saw them. But, but Keith, and then also you have the, the officers setting up a lunch table on top of the squad car, eating lunch during this scene. Do you think that's nor a normal um, response to this, like police officers are going to, hey, let's go get lunch now. You know, what Is do you that think of that? Normal response where well, people have to eat. Yeah, get I know people have to eat. I yeah, mean, I don't see. I mean, you know, Mr. 
Mr. Havoc makes a big deal about that, and he also makes a big deal about, you know, priority for porta potties, uh, when he doesn't even stop to consider that uh, we're talking about a crime scene. You're not going to have people, uh, you know, spreading their DNA behind the back of the school or going into the, you know, restrooms there, which is an active crime scene. And they bring these porta potty, you know, he says, priorities for porta potty. They didn't come until like 11, in the 11 o'clock hour. Okay, so I can see a, a big reason why they would need to have porta potties there and food. Okay, so, I mean, so they have food there. Uh, what does that prove to me? I mean, to most people, and I, 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 don't, I don't see that as even an issue. I mean, there's so many other things which they claim out there that we could talk about. Is sure. Well, food, well I mean, okay. What here's answer do you want me to give you? I mean, people had to eat. Okay, no, that's fair. That's fair. They just seem to be very nonchalant about their activities at the time. What about the, the video at the schoolhouse that shows looks like people going in and out of the schoolhouse and just walking around aimlessly, including one of the guys uh, in the blue coat who is supposedly had kids at his house at that time? Well, you're talking about the fire station, which was right. a clever little editing thing. And you can look at the top corner, left-hand corner, where you see a silver car or a silver van. Oh, I know. It does, they loop it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know, but you see people going out one door and going back into the front door. And then it's okay, looped. Well, yes, it is looped. The front door. Okay. I mean, you can't see you can't see the front door from from that uh, okay. from that angle. You can't see that they're entering in there. They're going around the building. I mean, what are they supposed to do? I mean, what kind of activities are they supposed to engage in? You see one guy walking around. Okay, so I mean, I can't get into that guy's head. I do know uh, that. Uh, Mr. Halbig's associate, uh, Professor Fetzer, made a big deal about the sign inside, saying that this was evidence that it was a uh, it was a drill. Saying, well, why would they have a sign inside on the day of this of this of this shooting? Why would they have that where everybody must check in? That sounds like a drill to me. Well, that sign wasn't brought in until the 18th, I believe it was, or the following Monday, where that's the notorious video where you see Gene Rosen in the background and says everybody must check in. So there's no evidence that there was any sign there on the 14th, any sign that said everybody must check in. They also talk about these land these ID cards on lanyards. There's an explanation for that. That's accountability software. And there was a company called Salamander Technologies, which even talks about it. They said that uh, we provided uh, uh, you know, we, we provided uh, these, these ID cards for uh, the days that, uh, you know, after the, the shooting took place because you don't want people walking around. They're ID cards, and they've got, like, a chip on them uh, so that, uh, you know, I mean, you have, to, you have to go in there and say, well, I'm, I'm so-and-so, I'm a parent or I'm mm -hmm. a reporter or something like that. They give you an ID card, which will track your movements, which makes sense. I mean, it really does make sense. So, I mean, there's an explanation for pretty much everything. Uh, and, you know, if, if there's something out there that uh, sounds compelling, you know, we research it, my friend and I, uh, C.W. Wade, and uh, we either give an, an answer to the question or we address the topic or we debunk the claim. I hate that word debunking because, I, I mean, I really do hate the word debunking, but, I mean, it really fits because a lot of these things are just ludicrous, these claims that are being made out there. All right. Uh, Mr. Halbig, do you have any response to anything we were just talking about? Well, let's go back with what you said about the food. Uh, if you recall, you saw it on the hood of Master Sergeant Davis's car. Rob, I want you to picture this. They actually carry all of those bananas. Now think about it. Who went shopping for bananas? You know how picky people are when they pick out their bananas at the store? Somebody, while there are 20 children shot three to 11 times, Teacher shot three to 11 times. Somebody goes shopping for bananas, sub sandwiches, Doritos, Gatorade, chips, and they bring it back to the crime scene. And that's not it. They don't eat lunch out there in the parking lot. They actually took the food. If Keith will look, they took the food and had lunch inside the school. Now that's a crime scene. Who in the hell is going to eat lunch where children's dead body, body fluids, blood spatter, brain tissues, they're all over the school, and you talk about porta potties. Look at the picture that the crime scene photographer took inside the school. There is one picture with seven urinals, nine toilet stalls, brand new, and they have to order porta potties. Uh, well, I mean, you know why. what? I mean, all you have. Can I speak? All you have to do is use a little common sense. And here's the thing, Keith, that you don't understand. For 17 months. I simply ask simple questions using the Connecticut Freedom of Information Act, 
And the questions that we asked, such as porta potties, who ordered them? Who was the incident commander? When were they ordered? How were they paid for? These are taxpayer dollars. For 17 months, somebody can't answer the question who ordered porta potties? And then, who's the incident commander? Nobody has yet to tell me that. And why no trauma helicopters? And please don't tell me they were all dead. And why would you not ever allow any of the paramedics and EMTs inside that school? And who declared them all dead within 10 minutes, Keith? Dear God, I'm asking these questions using the Connecticut Freedom of Information Act. And for 17 months, they have refused to answer those questions. And the last one I'm going to tell you, to find out whether the school works or not since I was a principal, I hope you check that out. You can contact anybody on my resume. They'll tell you. And you can look at my evaluations if you like. But here's the question. I requested the work order submitted by the school principal, Don Hawksprung, the assistant principal, or the head custodian from March the 1st through December 13th, 2012. What that will show me and everyone in this event whether the school was operating or not, because in the summertime, Keith, is when we, we principals, we get the school ready for the next year for 17 months. What a simple question, and they refuse to answer it. Go ahead, it's yours. Keith, you there? Okay, yeah, your 16, your, your 16 questions that- uh, no, no, I'm not talking about the 16 yeah, but, questions. I'm talking well, about what I just to, said. Why would you take okay, food? Well, you asked, for school? instance, you asked, you asked, I mean, you said a lot of things. I mean, which one do you want me to address? I mean, the well, one that strikes out to me, you said, who declared them dead? You were talking the about the parties. Hey, 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 oh. Okay. What is the big conspiracy, the porta potty conspiracy theory there? Uh, because we don't know the name of the company that provided the porta potties. I think, you know, what is the conspiracy? Tell me what you're going to prove on the witness stand here with that. Well, number I mean, one, nobody picks up the phone okay, to call the trauma helicopters, but they pick up the phone to call porta potties. Let's talk about the helicopters. Let's talk about the helicopters. If you go back to, I believe, 2009, 2010. The, the last mass casualty incident in Connecticut was the Hartford uh, Brewery or the bottling company there. And uh, there's, some, there's a couple of news articles from that era that talk about that, uh, that uh, helicopters were standing by. This was a mass casualty with, I believe, nine deaths. Helicopters were standing by, but they were not used because they figured they could uh, transport the victims uh, easier by ambulance. And there's a lot of considerations when we're talking about helicopters. There's a noise factor. There's wind and noise factor. I mean, you've got to remember that they didn't discount the possibility of a second shooter until the next day, okay? And uh, it was much quicker to get bodies out uh, to get uh, people transported to the hospital by ambulance or by any other means than through this helicopter. And you keep saying, you know, uh, you can only take like one or two victims in uh, that helicopter anyway. Uh, from the research that I've done, uh, I've talked to some people. I don't have that at my fingertips, so I'm, I'm sorry. But, I mean, if this becomes a big issue, I will go into it in more depth. But you keep, I mean, this is the thing, Mr. Halvick, is you, you present yourself as the source of authority on all this stuff. I don't. You see, I try to back up everything that I say with source material, whether it's an expert or whether it's something online, whether it's an, an article or an official document from some kind of organization that deals in these things. But, you see, the problem is, is that we're supposed to just believe everything that you say. Uh, and it just, I mean, you keep saying, well, why aren't there lawsuits? Well, well it's framed from the premise that they did something wrong, that the cops did something wrong, or uh, the procedure wasn't followed based on you, okay? Based on you only. I don't hear anybody else coming out uh, that's a, a law enforcement expert, someone with some significant experience in mass casualty incidents, saying, yeah, Mr. Halby is right. Why haven't you found someone to uh, substantiate your claims rather than going around there all by yourself, the Lone Ranger, uh, saying he's saying these things. Well, you promised that you were going to have these people come forward. And what about these Connecticut state troopers that you said showed you the script? And uh, oh, I should tell everybody, there, right now, if you go to Veterans Today, there's an article about an 11,000-page script that Professor Fetzer 
uh, says that uh, Mr. Halbig is in possession of. It's still there in veterans today. And Mr. Halbig, in a uh, YouTube video, I believe it was with Montagraph, if you go, talking about this, he says, well, Professor Fetzer screwed up. It wasn't an 11,000-page script. So, uh, Mr. here we got Professor Fetzer, this guy who's uh, out we're off to Can we stay focused on saying you can have no, 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 we responded no, 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 no. to the tragedy? No, 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 no. This is a very important thing. This is a very important thing. We have Professor Fetzer and everybody else um, getting over on everybody because they don't cross their T's and dot their I's. Yeah, we have Mr. Fetzel, Professor Fetzel. And he's not he's not here to even defend himself, Keith. Keith, let's let's stick to what let's just stick to what he just said. He's not here to even defend himself. And and you've you've put out enough accusations, I think. On that morning, who who were the first three people inside the school? Keith, it's your turn. Who were the first three police now, now, officers, and what time did they enter the school? Well, no, you know, listen, 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 Halbeck. We're not going to have you conducting some kind of quiz session with me. Well, right. you're the you expert. You, you're you're, you're calling me a fraud, so no, I want to no, know no, how no, good no, you no, are. Show you the report. Let me, let, listen, you were saying that well, who called these people dead? The report clearly shows. No, that, uh, Keith, there were two new Keith, ambulances who, were the three, who were the three first police you. officers inside the school, and what time listen, did they enter? It's called tracing the footsteps of an active shooter mass casualty event, since you say I don't know what I'm talking about. Who you were the three, three first law no, no, enforcement you're not officers who you're not entered gonna, the you're school? You're not going to close me and start running. We're not going to run a debate here. I'm doing That's what this is. It's, it's a, a debate. You make. Well, I, I, I just want to say something real quick. Keith, if, if this school yeah. has been in operation, there would be work orders, and what's what state secrets are going to get spilled if they show Mr. Halbig the work orders, which he's requested through the Freedom of Information Act in, in uh, Connecticut. Well, hey, I have absolutely no, I mean, based on Mr. Halbig's history of lying, who knows if that information was already sent to him and he's sitting on it. I don't know that for a fact. I don't know what the holdup is, and I don't know what uh, the specific reason why they wouldn't do it. You know, there are, uh, uh, there are uh, the privacy uh, clauses in a lot of these reasons why they can't release specific kinds of information. That might be it. I mean, I'm just speculating. I don't know. I haven't looked into that specific thing uh, with his Freedom of Information Act request. All I know is I haven't seen him post anything that looks anywhere near a formal request. Can you do that for us, Mr. Halby? Can you? Yes, I can. My attorney. You told me. I mean, you can hey, I, 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 all right, well, let, them up. and and let's let's uh let's move on from this, um, Keith. Well, yeah, Keith, uh, what are these? What, uh, you know, you, you seem to want to attack the investigators. What does Mr. Halbig have to gain? What do these other people have to gain by putting this information out there? This is, I mean, to say that a either it didn't happen or no kids were killed or, or kids were killed by the government. However, or or it happened exactly the way they said it did. To go through that, I I mean, what do all these people out here have to gain to? to keep messing with the people of Sandy Hook after two years? Well, because this thing is, okay, as far as getting into people's heads, I can't do that. All I can say is that I know that Mr. Halbig has been caught in so many lies. But as far as other people are concerned, okay, what are, why are they doing this? Because they're under the false impression that there is significant evidence to conclude that this was some kind of false flag operation. And one, I mean, they keep passing this information along from one person to the next. Every time there's a shooting, within minutes, people say, oh, well, this has all the hallmarks of a false flag attack, blah, 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 so on and so forth. I mean, that's the, the question. I can't climb into people's heads, but I do believe that there is this general distrust, and this is the fault of the government. It's the fault of the mainstream media for, uh, uh, you know, fostering this type of uh, 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 you know, contempt for the government. I mean, they they deserve it. They really do. But the thing is, is we have to apply really solid investigative research into these claims before we go out and make wild accusations. Uh, people need to think for themselves, just like in this video, they make that claim. You really need to 
uh, look into things. So, you know, like Tyranny News Network, and I, I could just give you one uh, example uh, in this new video that they have where he's wondering why there's so much activity. Why are we talking 36, about a video, Bob? I thought we were going to talk and debate the facts about Sandy Hook. Hey, you know what? I have not interrupted you when you're talking. I'm trying to make you hear. He's asking about what's the motivation for this. Well, yeah. you know, I can speculate a lot of reasons. I mean, you, just for the fact that people put comments on your articles is enough to lift your spirits uh, with a lot of people. So it could be recognition and fame. Uh, a lot of people monetize their YouTube videos. Uh, they're, they're getting money off of these things. They make DVDs. Uh, but I think the vast majority of the people really are under the impression that this really did, uh, that this really was a hoax. And it's based on bad information. So they pick it up and then they, they throw it out. You know, they make their own video and it's just basically a regurgitation of something that's already been debunked. And then, you know, I come across it. And I look into the information and I find out where it's bad and I write an article about it or I'll talk about it. So, I mean, as far as the motivation, who knows? I mean, it's, it's, that's all, you know, you, it that's, depends on the person you're talking to, I suppose. Rob, can I With make Mr. a comment? Halley, yeah, go ahead. Mr. Halley, well, I mean, well, hold on, hold on. Are you finished, Keith? Now, I'm going to say that I yeah, was a yeah. school administrator. I know I'm a fraud, but I'm going to say that I was a school administrator for many, many well, years. And I have to say this on behalf of Don Hawksprung who supposedly was the principal and was shot on December 14, 2012, I can tell you this with certainty. Being a female school principal, she, Dawn Hawksborough, would have never, never, ever in her lifetime allowed her school, Sandy Hook Elementary School, to look so filthy and so deplorable on December 14, 2012. She would have never never in her life ever allowed her school to become a toxic waste dump, exposing every one of her children and school staff members to serious lifelong health risks. All you have to do is look at the crime scene photos. It's not Wolfgang saying it. When you look at those pictures, the doors are rotten. It's filthy. They got mold, mildew. Look at the outside. It's deplorable. And they called that a vanguard school. And people moved to Newtown, Connecticut, just so their children could attend Sandy Hook Elementary School. I'm going to tell you what. There isn't an elementary school principal in the United States that would ever, ever allow his or her school to be that filthy. Well, and I, I got to say this. Keith, I asked you about this, this, the surveillance video. Why don't they just release a frame? And you said they had a system, but it didn't record. Who has, uh, who, whoever, se who sets up a security system that you can't record in? I mean, do, I've never well, even heard of this. that. This is, uh, well, okay. When, when my, uh, when my son was going to school uh, not too long ago, uh, his school didn't have any security cameras. And I know that, uh, uh, Right, but when my, they set up uh, cameras, friend, they always set up a recording friend, system. Okay, but the thing because it's worthless is, to have. This is, this is how it worked. This is okay. how it worked. You yeah. Go up, you go up to the door and you push a buzzer, and the uh, the person on the other side inside the school looks on the video monitor and sees who it is, verifies who it is, and buzzes them in. Okay, there wasn't a recording feature. I mean. Asking me why there wasn't, I can't tell you. But all I can say is there wasn't a recording feature, and that's what it says clearly in the report. So we don't have video footage of Adam Wanza going into that school and shooting, uh, you know, those children. We don't have that because it didn't have a recording feature, and it was uh, installed back in, I believe, uh, 2006. And Mr. Abig uh, even said that he received some information or some documents which show that it had a strike plate and video camera installed sometime in 2006, I believe. That's what he said. Isn't that correct, uh, Wolf? That Absolutely. You did get something well, you yeah. know, okay. I think, Keith, thanks for remembering that. But see what makes it so unique. I did get something stating that that system that they have was installed in 2006. But what makes it ironic is the fact that all the major newspaper talked about the next day how the principal, Don Hawksprung, installed a new security system inside of Sandy Hook. And she made all the parents aware of it through newsletters and, and letters to the, the parents at home. So my question was, what was the new security system she installed? And you know what? To this day, nobody will tell me. I will.
I'll tell you. Okay, first of all, uh, you're talking about an article that came out in the Quran, uh, which was on the day of the shooting. And this is just another example of why you can't believe the mainstream media. They make mistakes all the time. And uh, if you look at the uh, – okay, they said uh, this section is a principal outline new security procedures at Teddy Hook Elementary School. That's the title of the article. If you read the letter itself, it says our district will be implementing a security system in all elementary schools as part of our ongoing effort. Okay, implementing a security system. That's not installing – a security camera that's implementing a security system, and they go on to say what the system is, where you have to, you'll be required to report directly to the office and sign in, blah, blah, blah. And then it goes on to say, you have to understand with nearly 700 students, okay, they didn't have nearly 700 students in 2012. That uh, is, makes more sense for 2010 and 2006. So what it appears to be here, because the Quran just simply came across this on their website. There's no date on this. There's no date. There's no letter. I mean, if you can find a letter that says 2012 with her signature on it from this, uh, and I, I'd like to see it. But there is no date on when this spe specific thing was drafted. It looks like it was recirculated every year, every school year, just sent out so that they were reminded of uh, the security system instead of writing a new letter. Uh, that's the thing. It doesn't say anything about installing a new security system. Well, why does it doesn't say anything like that. Keith, I mean, there were only like. Keith, hmm? let me ask. Let me ask you. There's one thing you didn't respond to. Now you talked about you're a parent and you have a child. Okay. Knowing that the Sandy Hook Elementary School on that day was so filthy, so deplorable, it's a toxic waste dump with high levels of uh, lead paint throughout the school, high level of asbestos, insulation, ceiling tiles, floor tiles. It has the highest level of PCP. Are you telling me that you allow your child to attend that school? Okay, well, you know, this is based on, uh, I mean, you say you're a safety, I, 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 I don't discount the fact that you are, uh, that you have experience in that uh, school safety. Listen, I, I do not uh, discount that one a bit, but that's not the issue as far as whether or not the school was clean or whether it was, it could very well be that that school uh, was in deplorable conditions, okay? So what does that prove, that it was a hoax for, because it was a dirty, it was a dirty school? I mean, we do have pictures of children that were in there with T-shirts. I mean, I've, I've seen photographs of children in that school with T-shirts that, that, uh, that say 2010 on it or 2009, 2012 uh, uh, from, from the website that they were walking down that school. The thing is, is it was in operation. Whether it was a dirty school, uh, whether that was an issue, <laughs> I don't see how that works into the whole conspiracy theory. I mean, if that's – and I would like to say this before I forget. I am all for Mr. Wolfgang Halbig bringing these things to court. I wish – oh, God, do I wish that it's some coming. judge would entertain would entertain uh, your, your evidence to bring it into court, and you can present your case to a jury – uh, and the state can bring their witnesses, you can bring your witnesses. I wish that could happen. I don't think it's going to happen, but I wish it would so we can clear this up once and for all. So you can go out there and say, well, the school wasn't in operation because it was too dirty. Or because, you know, if you go to the Wayback Machine, uh, it shows that uh, there was no activity, even though that's already been debunked. Just, you know, work but on you the know, Keith, analysis. But Keith, um, you know, Keith, you notice that I don't worry about the Wayback Machine. I don't, I don't talk about things that uh, I can't. I mean, I can only talk about facts. And that's when the school is so filthy. That's why you want to have work orders. If that school is so filthy, that deplorable, and then when you saw the report that went in front of the city council, Pat Leorda, whatever her name is, and they had to pay $2 million to have all of that toxic waste uh, uh, transported across state lines and children are going to that school. And the next thing that I did with Connecticut Freedom of Information Act to make sure that I'm not wrong is I requested, I requested all emails between the principal, the assistant principal, and the school superintendent, the assistant superintendent, finance department, human resources, okay. facility. You know what that shows? That there's somebody actually working in that school for 17 months. Now think about it. When I was a principal, Keith, you could be a parent. You can walk in my office and demand my emails, and guess what I have to do? 
I have to let you have them. Those are public records. Keith, do you have any response to that? Yeah, well, once again, you know, we, we keep hearing about uh, all of these uh, requests that he's made. Uh, he hasn't publicized anything, and, and this just seems just aw awfully weird because he is uh, so quick to post anything that he gets, whether it's a certificate or a photograph of him as a highway patrolman back in 1974. I'm just asking, and I, I think that your donors, people who have— uh, given you what I don't know how much you've raised. I, I know that uh, you yourself acknowledge more than thirty thousand dollars. Uh, I think it would be fair for them if you would post some of these Freedom of Information Act requests. Maybe maybe put those online somewhere instead of just putting up your claims. Uh, you know that this uh, script part one, script part two, and then all we find out is that the script is actually the final report. Uh, I mean. Really, I mean, show us exactly the kinds of requests that you've made, and then we can follow up on those a lot easier. We can see the, the, the way you made the request and see if, you, if, if there is some basis to your allegation that this information is public and should have been given to you. Now, okay? Keith, can you do that Keith, for us? Keith, let me tell you, since you're calling all these people to verify my background, all you have to do is call the Freedom of Information Commission in Hartford, Connecticut, ask to speak to the ombudsman, ombudsman, and he will provide you copies of all of my requests through Paul Spinella, the Hartford attorney. So there, we shouldn't have to debate this. You can call the Freedom of Information Commission. They have copies of every request as we're speaking on this show, Alex Jones. Well, guys, let me tell you this. It's been about 45 minutes we've been going at it, and I, I'm still um, not convinced one way or the other about what has happened. Um, and, and, you know, it just goes to the, uh, I, I guess it just shows to the immensity of all the, the details and minutia that we can dig up. And, I mean, I think as, as researchers and journalists on, on both sides of the story that, that I think we need to, um, you know, be a little more civil to each other and try to work to find answers instead of trying to do background checks on everybody looking for information because that's where it gets into an attack the messenger type mode. And that's what they did to Gary Webb when he released uh, his Dark Alliance reports. They started attacking his character saying, who are you to be sitting in here listening to federal cases talking about CIA informants running drugs? I know that's a side issue, but it gets to, you know, when, when it's a continual attack of the messenger, I start seeing visions of Gary Webb. Keith, do you agree or disagree with that statement? Or? Oh, I, 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 I absolutely agree. But when you have people fabricating evidence, I mean, I have done the, have just looked this up, Sandy Hook's flex fit hat hoax, okay? The mm -hmm. officers are out there saying that uh, the that, that flex fit hat that was worn by Adam Lanza wasn't made until a year after the event, and I proved that the person actually lied. They fabricated the email, and I did a recorded interview with the vice president of FlexFit, who said that the person is making false allegations, okay? And those articles are still up there all over the place, okay. alleging these things. So, you know, and uh, this is the thing. If we're going to call ourselves truthers, we need to stand by the truth. And we should be supporting uh, lawsuits that are uh, being filed against libel and defamation. If there's any truth to those, we should stand by that and let those things go to court and let them battle it out so we can find the truth. That's what I'm looking for, the truth, okay? You can't just discount the, uh, the testimony, the statements, the reports that were written by sworn police officers, unless you have evidence that would suggest that they are lying. You need to impeach their testimony. You need to impeach their character. And no one has done that. They have not brought one whistleblower, not one counter witness, not one shred of evidence. And that's what is required. You can have all the theories that you want, but listen, we're talking about individual people, parents. We're talking about small town cops and reporters. You guys are going after them, not the government. Look at all of these videos. It's all going after the parents and, and looking for children that sang at the Super Bowl. This is absolutely uh, it's beyond the pale, okay? Uh, you cannot smear these people who just lost their children to a massacre two years ago and say that they're characters in some kind of conspiracy theory unless you have solid proof. Uh, I agree with that statement, and I think people are still looking for answers and reasons. Uh, Wolfgang Halbig is one of them. Wolfgang, I'm going to give you the final word on this, and I think that was uh, – Keith, that, thank you for joining us, definitely, by the way. And go ahead, uh, Wolfgang. 
for Rob. I, I really appreciate allowing you and Keith and I to come. I, I, I think Keith has a passion. If you hear it in his voice, definitely. I think he really cares. I'm going to tell you what, whether I think it's a great debate. I think it's healthy that Keith is out there. I just wish he wouldn't call me a fraud. I wish he'd come to Florida, come visit me, have lunch together, and see me for who I am. I'm old. Hey, I, I don't even want to be doing this. I'm retired. I mean, had those two police officers, and Keith says, well, they never came to his house. Trust me, they did. Had they never come, Keith and I would have never met. Rob, you and I would have never met. And I am not a conspiracy theorist. I do this for a living. You know, and what really got my attention is that three days after the shooting, Rob, I actually made a donation to United Way Western Connecticut. And what's really ironic, when I flew up to Danbury to inspect their 990s, their uh, nonprofit records, they had eight police officers stopping me from going in to look at their 990s and simply ask questions. And I was trespassed. Now, is that the America that we live in? I taught American government to high school seniors, and I teach them to ask questions. Rob, I pray to God that I'm wrong. And I'll tell you what, if, if I am wrong, and Keith, I want you to hear this loud and clear. If I am wrong, I will apologize to anyone and everyone, and I'll run to the nearest mental health facility, and I can promise you this, I will voluntarily admit myself because I cannot put people through the pain and suffering as you're describing. Let me tell you, I'm old. I have done, I, I'm a public servant. I don't make a lot of money. But I'm retired. Uh, I've served my military. I, I've done all the right things. I've met good people. All I care about is the truth. And I don't understand why they can't answer those questions, which are by law, it, they're not exempt. And I haven't offended any parents. I'm not, I'm not questioning any parents. I simply want to know the truth. Well, there you go. Man, I tell you, we... We got the, the two-year anniversary approaching on Sunday. Uh, this is Friday, and uh, I, I think we've really turned a lot of ground. And, and this is the kind of discourse that needs to happen, I think, in order for, it, on both sides of the issue. I'm, I'm so glad you guys both decided to participate in this. Um, you know, I could hear the passion in both your voices. I both think you're very sincere. I don't think either one of you are frauds. Um, you know, I, I, and I definitely want to see uh, a resolution to this as well, because, you know, these school shootings, I, there's going to be more of them, more are going to happen. And it's sad that, you know, I, and I think it's a, a testament to how much we medicate our, our children instead of actually helping our children. And that's a whole nother discussion for another day. But Wolfgang Halbig, Keith Johnson, thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, I, next time we have some big developments, I, I hope we can get the two of you together again on Skype and, and continue this discourse. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Keith. Yeah, thank you. Well, that was interesting. Uh, I don't know if we found a solution or if we learned anything more about Sandy Hook. Um, at, le at least I didn't. I just, uh, I don't know. It was, we as Americans need to come together and look for the reasons why we're getting into these tiffs and why some people believe some people and some people don't. Who's the authority on this and who's the authority on that? We're all humans here on this earth, and we've all got to get through this together. We're all going to end up dead someday, so we might as well try to make uh, our societies and our communities as best they can be so the next generation can build off that. That's got to be the way we're going. And, um, you know, do debates like this help? Put your comments down below. Let me know if this was even helpful because, you know, after listening for uh, 45 minutes of those two guys, you know, go at it. I, I don't know if we really made any headway um, on Sandy Hook and with the two-year anniversary approaching. But uh, regardless, if you are watching this on YouTube, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. It's our members are the reason why we're able to do these long interviews, do our live shows that we've put out there. Um, it, it helps everything we do. And right now we're running a big special $29.95 for the year and that's our best deal we've ever put together. And also you can share your username and password and have up to 20 people using that username and password on at the same time. It's not, we've never had that before. It used to be 11, it used to be five, and now we're up to 20. And it's all because the more members we get, 
it allows us to open up the bandwidth a little wider and spread the information out because that's what we're interested in. We're interested in the information war that is going on. It is the war going on for your mind. And that is all we have at this point. Uh, we've got information. We can put it out there. Being a member helps us do that a lot more efficiently and have a lot more eyeballs out there uh, looking at information. Unless it's to send reporters to, uh, to Sandy Hook, which we've done. We sent Dan Badandi there. Uh, it allows us to send the guys to Ferguson, the Bundy Ranch, uh, the border. We've made many trips down to the border, several reporters, uh, cameramen, and all that costs money. And it's you out there, the members of PrisonPlanet.tv, that are making that possible. It's also the people that visit InfoWarsShop.com and purchase the products we have and also InfoWarsLife.com. So we do appreciate those of you out here who are supporting us. And with that, that's our show for this evening. My name is Rob Dew. Thanks for joining us on the InfoWars Nightly News. We'll see you back here next week, 7 p.m. Central. Good night. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.